We're just getting dark news, uh, dismal news from Donald Trump's longest serving chief of staff, a uh, general who committed his life to protecting and defending Americans, defending our shores and defending the Constitution of the United States. Yeah, a general who served the country, who lost a son to war, a general who served as chief of staff to Donald Trump for a couple of years during that first term, and who now is so deeply concerned that we're going to talk to Michael Schmidt, has gone on the record for several interviews talking about his concerns about Donald Trump's obsession with autocrats, with fascism. And as Mika read that in our open, saying Donald Trump's praise for Hitler, it's one of those moments yeah. where we just have to stop and consider what is being said about this man. I mean, we can't blow past that. He gets so many passes. He's so graded on a curve. Praise for Hitler. That's disqualifying yeah. in any other political campaign in the history of politics. And yet Donald Trump skates by among many of his supporters. And by the way, many people in Congress and senators, people who know better uh, about this man. So we'll get into some of the details of it. But this is uh, some we'd heard whispers about this. But now General Kelly going on the record to talk about it. Yeah, this is a moment that, that will stand out <laughs> as we look back on how this plays out. Yeah, and, and well, let, let, let's go into the, the, the tapes and, and see, of course, so what, this what is Republicans Michael Schmitz, do oh. to, to defend Donald okay, Trump Okay, we'll do that case. as well. Um, this is Michael Schmitz's interview with Donald Trump's former chief of staff, John Kelly, in taped conversation. Kelly said the former president meets the definition of a fascist and would rule like a dictator if he wins another term. Here you can hear them. Certainly, uh, the former president uh, is in the far right area. He's certainly an authoritarian, um, uh, admires people who are dictators. Uh, he has said that. Um, so he fall certainly falls into the, into the general definition of, of uh, fascist, for sure. If he was left to his own devices, would he be a dictator if he didn't have people around him? Oh, I think, he, you know, I think he'd love to be. Uh, I, I think he'd love to be just like he was in business. He could tell people to do things and they would do it and, uh, and not really bother too much about whether uh, what the legalities were and whatnot. Kelly, a retired general, held the position of chief of staff longer than anyone in the Trump administration. He called the former president's recent comments about possibly using the military on American citizens disturbing, adding the remarks prompted him to speak out. And I think this, this issue of, of uh, using the military uh, to go after American citizens is one of those things I think... Uh, is, is a very, very bad thing. Even to say it for political purposes to get elected, I think it's a very, very bad thing, uh, let alone actually doing it. He's certainly the only president that has all but rejected what America is all about and, and what makes America America in terms of our Constitution, in terms of us, our, our, our values, uh, you know, the way we look at everything to include family and government and He's certainly the only president that I know of that was certainly in my certainly in my lifetime that was like that. Kelly also said Trump, quote, never accepted the fact that he wasn't the most powerful man in the world. And by power, I mean an ability to do anything he wanted any time he wanted. Kelly confirmed previous reports that the former president spoke positively of Hitler. Iggy Connors is more than once that, you know, the Hitler did some good things too. And of course, <laughs> if you know history, um, again, I think he's lacking in that. But if you know what his, you know, Hitler was all about, uh, it'd be, you'd be pretty hard to make an argument that he did anything good. A Trump campaign spokesperson said in a statement that Kelly totally beclowned himself by recounting debunked stories about the Trump administration should remind everybody that the chief of staff is about as close as it gets to the president. And this is a respected retired general. Well, I mean, imagine a punk uh, talking about an American general that way. I don't even know who the spokesperson was. So 
uh, I would say that of anybody, Democratic or Republican or Independent, attacking a man who's committed his life to the United States military and protecting America. Lost a son. Uh, lost a son uh, who was who gave his life to protect America, saying the, the word beclowned. And these aren't debunked stories. These are incidences where, as chief of staff, he was talking to Donald Trump. I, Admiral Stravitas, I don't really know where to begin here. Um, so let me, why don't we just begin at the beginning, start yeah. at the very beginning. Uh, one of the reasons the general said he had to come out was when Donald Trump started saying, and let us say he continues to say that he's going to use the United States military against his political enemies. He's going to use the United States military against uh, uh, his political opponents. Uh, first of all, uh, please tell us again what an absolute breach this is, not only from American history, but the American Constitution, from everything that you have fought for and have given your entire life uh, for in defending this Constitution. Thanks, Joe. Uh, let, let's really go back to the beginning. I met John Kelly when uh, we were in our 20s and serving together on an aircraft carrier forward deployed to the Middle East. I've known John Kelly since 1979. I watched his children grow up. Two of his sons became Marine officers. Never forget, he is a gold star father. His son died under my command in Afghanistan on the 9th of November uh, in 2010, uh, 2009. So I've known John Kelly forever. And I just want to start by saying he is as truthful, as honest, as genuine, and as authentic as anyone I have ever met. He's also, as you say, a four-star general. That means throughout the course of his career, Joe, again and again, he raised his right hand and swore an oath, not to the president of the United States, the commander in chief. He swore that oath like every military member does to the constitution of the United States. I solemnly swear to support and defend the constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. So let's bring it home. What is an enemy to the Constitution? I would say it's someone who wants to take control, take power, and use it to disassemble our democracy. That's the threat John Kelly was describing uh, so well and so authentically and so honestly in the superb article by Michael. So, Michael Schmidt, let's get into some more detail about what John Kelly told you and how troubled in your conversations you thought he really was, why he felt like he needed to step forward. He talked about um, fascism. He talked about Trump governing like a dictator. He talked about his affinity for Adolf Hitler, talked about personal loyalty above the Constitution. He talked about Donald Trump just not understanding fundamental American values. Um, what was uh, exceptional to you? What stood out? We've heard criticism from General Kelly of Donald Trump before, but what stood out to you this time? I think the most important thing about it was the fact that we could hear the audio. I think that as reporters, we run into different obstacles in terms of telling a story. And when we think that there's an important story, we have to continue to look for new and different ways to tell it. And I think the most important thing here is that you can hear Kelly himself in his own words expressing it, and people can hear it for themselves. I think, to your point, a lot has been written about Kelly. A lot has been written about his relationship with Trump, about what he has seen. But I thought that the, the most important thing was to capture him actually saying that. And that was not... Um, you know, lo logistically, that wasn't a hard thing to do, but to get Kelly to that point was, uh, you know, a very, very hard thing to do and something that took, you know, in some time, in some ways, it took many years. Um, yeah. This is not what John Kelly wants to be doing. John Kelly wants to be going 
to talk to young Marines, to talk to college students about the United States, about service. He wants to be going to see Gold Star families and VFW halls. You're not, you know, John Kelly is not someone who's on television. He's not someone you'll see on the campaign trail. He's not someone that's really that easy to find. He's off doing those those types of things. And I thought that you know, he, I didn't think that John Kelly was going to sit down and go on television. I didn't think that John Kelly was going to allow a camera near him. I didn't think he, he certainly wasn't going to go on the campaign trail to do this. So trying to get him to talk in a way that was more than just text, I thought was really important here. Um, text is important. It's the basis of, of what we do as reporters. But I thought we needed to look for another way to communicate his story and what he had to say. And that's why we put so much of the audio out. And certainly, you know, um, we've seen over the past, uh, Mika, over the past eight years, Donald Trump praising one autocrat after another. Right. Um, we've seen him praise President Xi. We've seen him praising President Putin. Mm -hmm. We've seen him praising Kim Jong-un, talking about love letters. Uh, and now we hear about this, this uh, praise for Hitler from, again, Donald Trump's longest serving chief of staff uh, and, and talking about uh, Hitler's generals. We also, by the way, just show how wasn't political at all. Uh, 26 years before Donald Trump ran, Vanity Fair had an article in 1990. 26 years. No, so this is politics aside. No politics. 1990, where Ivana Trump uh, talked to her lawyer about how Donald Trump would keep speeches of Hitler by his bedside and would read them. And so uh, that's bizarre enough. Uh, but you keep hearing, and we saw it. Uh, we're going to talk about it with Jeffrey Goldberg from The Atlantic at 7 o'clock, uh, the obsession with Hitler and Hitler's generals. Um, and it, um, again, it's, it's just, it fits a pattern. Yeah.